Yeah. Aw. Yeah, what's your last name, Mike? Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> you know, looking at you, that just made me realize how old we are. I know. Same with Dave. Yeah, I know. Okay, you submit to anybody? Why not supposed to get that old? Okay. Let's call this uh, Dave Dave July 27th meeting of the Rolling Sheets Collective Board of Order. Yeah. Order. There we are. Uh, first up is community input. Is there any? <clears throat> Ms. Hanson? I'll speak my way up there. I just had two quick things. Um, one is, as you know, I've written a letter regarding the use of town property. I've been a little concerned about the idea that we don't have any procedures in, in place for permitting if someone wants to use town property, um, you know, say a group comes in or, or any large group, you know, we don't know what kind of procedures should be done. As far as I can see, I don't see anything on our books that suggests a permitting process, which most towns have. I think it's helpful for liability purposes and a number of other things. For instance, if you're going to have a large group, you might want to be notifying the fire department or the police department, et cetera, et cetera. You want to make sure that they have insurance, all of those types of things. And I think that would be something we should be looking into for any town property use. The other thing is um, I know that there's been someone here looking to see about doing some repairs to some town property, and it seems to me that we should be very careful before we just simply say, it's a great idea, just do it, it's not costing us any money, because it could cost us money in the long run if we're not careful. And my concerns are, um, for instance, if the work is done, who's going to oversee the work? How is it overseen? Who's responsible for overseeing the work? If the work's done and we don't like it, what do we do then? If the work's done in a bad manner, what do we do then? I mean, there's just a million questions that I have. So I think the notes go really beyond whether the person's insured or not, if somebody wants to do it. So I think we have to think about that. And as I say, with the um, impact of that park in general, I think we should give it some special consideration for Bicentennial Park, because this is a park that was dedicated to the town back in the 70s. A lot of people put a lot of time, money, and effort into making it a beautiful little park. If you look around, you'll see memorial plaques for each of the trees, we see um, somebody took the time to build that lovely um, little uh, gazebo and things like that. And I think we shouldn't let anything like that fall into this repair. So I'm hoping that the town will consider as soon as possible um, those issues that I've brought up and that you'll consider them when you make decisions about whether people can come in and use the property. The other issue I have is um, just a quick one. Um, I don't know. I know that I've heard that there's a lot of money available to towns, and I don't know if we're trying to get our fingers into any of those pots, but I hope we are. And if we haven't, if we don't know what the money is, maybe someone could be contacting our New Hampshire delegation to find out what federal funds we might be able to grab. Seems to me that that's... ARPA funds? I don't know the different funding sources, but I know there's a lot of federal funds out there, and I heard the report from one of our... Uh, New Hampshire delegation saying that if we don't ask for it soon, it will all go away. So <laughs> if there's anything out there, let's hope we can get it. Yes. Those are my it's, big it's, issues. It's on our agenda tonight, as is Bicentennial Park. Oh, good. Well, I, I hope you take those things into consideration. And also, I had gone to the New Hampshire Municipal Association and pulled up some guidelines that they had about um, permitting. That okay. they had some articles that they're aware of. that what you've attached? And I attached it to okay. the letter that I sent. Fantastic. So I hope those are helpful and thank you for listening to me speak again. Thank you. Anyone else for community input? Is there appropriate time to talk about comments regarding the parking ordinance? Um, I'm sorry, can you just state your name? I know you sure. are. David Hill, 619 Main Street. Thank you. Um, that is also on our agenda for tonight. Um, I'd like to make some comments if I could. Okay. Are they are they new comments or have we heard these? Yeah, no, they're okay. new comments. So I was in the I was in attendance at the Highway Safety Committee 
uh, meeting, um, the last one that they had, and Kim was there, and the chief was there, and, and George Gomez was there. Um, and when I went to that meeting, I, I felt prepared to kind of speak my piece, because I thought I knew the arguments that were before the board um, regarding the no parking. Um, up until that time, um, you know, they were talking about grass, but after the public part of that, that discussion, uh, when I stated my case, the, the argument was reframed. So the argument became to be about um, line of sight. So they, they figured that we could solve the grass problem, um, but, but um, the, first, the first time I heard about this line of sight issue is when Mr. Haynes brought it up a month ago at the public hearing. And when I heard that night, I, I thought it must be about the line of sight, like looking out of locus up the hill, you know, towards Prospect. Um, but now, so other than Mr. Haynes, I never heard it mentioned before. I never heard it mentioned by, by the, this chief. I never heard it mentioned by the former chief. I never heard it mentioned by members of the safety committee, the select board, or any records I could find. The solution which may be proposed to you tonight when we talk about the ordinance um, is to create an address by address no parking zone. So I get parking, but next door to me wouldn't. Um, the Smalls would get parking, but the Deshanos next door to them wouldn't. Um, the spaces in our front of our home may be between the, the, the Smalls and myself and the house in between might get parking privileges back, but um, but the rest, everybody else will have to will have to do without parking. So they said 617, which is next to me, could get parking back if they cut down the tree that the town planted like 30 years ago. But with, with all due respect, and, and I know you guys have been here forever, longer than me, like line of sight's never been an issue in this area. If it was an issue, um, then I, I would ask why it, why it never came up before, why the Highway Safety Committee never brought it up, why the Select Board never brought it up, why the police department never brought it up. So, and I know the new chief's been on the force a long time, and I know he's driven down Main Street as much as just about anybody in town. And, and nothing's changed in all these years. The curve on the road, it's the same curve that's been there all the years since I've been there. Where the cars park haven't changed in the entire history of the town. And, you know, nobody on the police force, the safety committee, the select board has mentioned line of sight on this block until right now. This is the first that I know of it. So, I'm, I'm, I don't mean to interrupt you, yeah. but I just want to let you know we're not making a decision tonight on changing the ordinance because we need to have another public hearing. Any change to the parking ordinance requires a public hearing. So I, okay. I appreciate this input. It might be better um, at that hearing. Okay. Um, did you did you have like an, other points that you wanted to make? Because I, I, I understand what you're saying completely. Yeah, I mean, I, I really think the problem is I don't think the select board should have even entertained the original comments from the highway safety well, that's, committee. I don't, that was a different have brought, I don't think you should have brought it back from the safety committee. I don't think the select board should have heard it. It wasn't okay, about that. That all happened, though. That okay. all has already done. So we have to, can only move forward. Okay. Um, and that's what we intend to do. Okay. Okay. Anything else you want to add? No. I'm, I'm not trying to cut you short. I just. It's been a long. This has been a long haul. Like this has been a long, a long, you know, stressful. I agree. Situation. Anyone else with community input? Michelle Small, 631 Main. I'm just, you said that there's going to be, I'm here for the same reason as David. Um, another public hearing, do you know when that would be? No. Okay. I mean, we, we need to give notice, as you know, um, and we're going to give a healthy notice, um, not rushing. And it, you said it's on the agenda tonight. Should I be staying for more to come, or is it safe to say you're done hearing about it? Um, you, I, I was going to suggest that the, this board hasn't yet heard the recommendation of the Highway Safety Committee. So first they have to hear that recommendation, decide if they want to take the recommendation, whatever it is, they'll discuss that. And then if they want to decide to propose another change to the parking ordinance, then they could decide that tonight, maybe not, but then they would set a date for that public hearing. So the first step is, they have to know and, and decide from, from Kim, who was representing the board at that meeting, like what is the recommendation and do they want to go forward with another proposed change? 
And so that is on the agenda for tonight, Michelle. Okay, thank you. Anyone else with community input? Don't see any. Uh, let's move along to the consent calendar. Uh, we have the minutes of July 12th and 19th. Um, a notice from Comcast about some changes to entertainment lineup. Um, a letter to from the New Hampshire DOT and uh, New Hampshire um, Department of Safety hearing notice. Does anyone have um, any comments on those, or we can we can vote to accept the consent calendar? Okay. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, <coughs> Department head business. Chief Rutherford. You're up. You want to go first? You're up. On the agenda first. I'm no surprised. Yeah. Uh, well, the only reason why Sean and I are here this evening is especially for the Indians or yeah, contract issues. Uh, I know. Uh, Caroline's been working with some other agencies to try to get some questions and some foundation that we can work on. But we all know that contract that we use now has been out of date for six months due to confusion on the New York Board of Directors. Uh, they had a misunderstanding as to when the contract actually expired and when it was due to be initiated again. So they had to talk about it. They're planning on doing that this week. But the day is, I don't, I don't know if you know anything from those folks. Um, but they were supposed to meet on it this week. There were some changes that we instituted into that last year that we wanted added on our side of things mm -hmm. for, uh, for training issues, uh, uh, we need paperwork issues from them, and whatnot. So you kind of have some sort of checks and balances. Because the, the overall thing with the ambulance is, is really. Nobody has been totally designated to keep an eye on it. I've just kind of taken on the role, but it's never been assigned to me. He is strong because he's a lot more uh, affiliated with the main side of things because they have to do both, both sides and you know, cross over in the line. Um, so we've kind of been keeping an eye on it as best we can. So as of now, we still know that we're without a contract. As a timeline for the way it's worked just in the last couple of days or two weeks, um, we first kind of found out about the contract on the 19th that it was not in the service, it was not happening. Caroline reached out to me to see if there's anything that I could do to speed it along. She was trying to reach their board of directors. I don't know what their timeline is. I don't know how often they meet. I don't know anything about what York does as far as that end. I contacted Jean, who was a supervisor. Uh, the ambulance over here in South Burwick that serves us. He made a call to Karen Tucker. These are people that we regularly have contact with. He pushed that on up to, uh, I don't know what's going on. These people need to get their such stuff in order and it's their fault that it's not. So Karen reached out, board of directors finally got a piece of the information and it found its way back to you, correct? So you've talked to Andre. Um, Armin Nadari. Armin Nadari, that's the guy. Yeah. Okay, so we've gotten that far. So we started making the steps to get to that point. Um, and Carol and I had a discussion about it the other day about even in your service as being provided. And you made some inquiries in the <coughs> agencies within the state to try to find the an answer. And you did not get very far. Um, so. What Mark is referring to is that at the last board meeting, um, the board asked that we have Mark sort of send a summary email of what is the landscape as far as ambulance options go. Um, I decided that part of that might be knowing that there are not a lot of options. What really is our obligation to provide ambulance service at all? When, you know, somebody calls 911. Not that we wouldn't want to provide service, but it's important to know in this landscape um, what really is our obligation and, and where does the law fall on that. So um, I reached out to the Municipal Association who um, basically said 
um, talk to Primex, who's our insurance carrier. Um, Primex says, you know, <laughs> it, it, it basically, it, it's a vague answer. It basically has to do with what is your, your, your community's expectation and talk to legal counsel. So, but, but it, you know, in other words, there's no clear answer on, you know, not offering ambulance. Not that you were exploring that necessarily, but um, I did. And we're trying to get the foundation on the responsibility and our to make sure that that's done. We still don't have that answer, really. So, um, I started to sit down the other night after Caroline requested that and get an email going. But every time I started doing it, it turned from one little line in the summer into pages so that I could get it explained so that everybody could understand what we're doing. Um, we have very limited choices as to what we can do as far as the time we to supply is supply the input service. Uh, there's like four different options that we could use. One is the existing one which we already have, mm -hmm. which is South Park Rest. Um, if we get going and we get the contract all signed, it would be still good for one and a half years. Okay. The rest of this year and next year, yep. under what we have now. Um, and again, that's depending on them, board of directors accepting the changes that they told they probably will for what we have added. So we could be squared away on that end. And then, by the way, Kim's new. This board is new. So this board would want to, I would say, like look the contract again to make sure that you're on board with it, with the changes, since Kim hasn't really had a chance to do that. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I want to look at that, as well as um, proposals from other agencies. And I feel like this really should be something that you would be investigating as our administrator, um, knowing there are potential legal implications we have to deal with the municipal association, so I feel like it's really something Caroline should be investigating. Well, that's why we're kind of working on it together, because I can't really spec services that I don't understand. You know, I, like, there's there's a lot of technical things around, certainly I can, you know, in a, in a broad level, but to be sure that we're not missing things, and he's also the person with contacts, because he interacts with these agencies because he's out in the field, so that's why we're kind of working together. So where does John fall into this picture? I mean, the chief, since he is technically safety as well. Should he be involved in those conversations? Has it been before? He admits that kind of always falls under the fire service. I think that it's is what, true. Fire um, and the EMS normally fall under the same category that we assist them as needed. So can we get the other, you got one option right now, you want to get the other three first, and then the other four. Yeah. The four okay, four. yeah, okay, we'll, we'll hit that now. Um, the second option, and they were in here when we gave a presentation it was three, four, five years ago. We took a presentation because York was out and we needed some other proposals. So Stewart's came in. They came in and gave a proposal on what they wanted to do. And when all the proposals were done from, I think we had three agencies at that point, we sat down and had a discussion and ended up staying with York. The biggest thing that's anything in the emergency services realm, what, what is the biggest issue that we have to deal with? It's time. It's response time. That is the biggest issue. John will tell you that. I will tell you that. Sean will tell you that. It's how quick we can get there to provide the services we need, whether it's police, fire, or ambulance. The biggest issue we had with stewards was their closest station is over on Route 108 in Summit. So on any good day, it's going to take them at least eight minutes on a very good day, or maybe even in the middle of the night to get to our community. That was a very huge stumbling block. In eight minutes, a lot of things to change as far as somebody having a medical event. The only other way to procure some of that and change that scenario is maybe the fire department one. And that's not the best scenario because we're not there all the time either. Oh. Well, we're probably going to arrive in a minute. Uh, uh, you probably will. <laughs> you guys are going to get a call. Yep. But, uh, yeah, I told you. <laughs> time wants. The thing is, is York's in community when they get a response within one or two minutes. They have enough time. Everybody else takes that response. So that's like our option number two. Option number three is the city of Dover. Dover would be the premier event if that's what you want to do. They're staffed 24 hours a day. They run two ambulances. They have 24 hours paramedic coverage on all of them. They're exploring 30 ambulances. The problem is cost. If you want to do any kind of thing with, with the uh, city of Dover, we explored this years ago and a couple of chiefs ago. And the way any ambulance service runs, they make their money for transport. And it's not so much on the EMS side. A lot of it's made on um, transporting from facility to facility and whatnot, hospitals and patients around and those things. There is money to be made in the EMS side of things. Uh, 
city of Dover uses it as an enterprise account, and they probably want three or four thousand medical calls a year. So what happens on the building side of things is they get a portion of that money that comes back to the fire department. They put it into an enterprise fund. That fund is used for two things. Buying new ambulances, new equipment, and training for the guys that are on the Second half of that goes back into the city's general fund. The city of Dover probably brings a million and a half dollars a year with the amount of EMS calls that they have. It's the exact same thing that your ambulance says. They bill for when there's transportation for a medical service. Mm -hmm. They get their portion of it. Shut up on the cell phone. They get their portion, so that's what sustains them. Uh, and it's the same thing with uh, stewards. The other issues with stewards is they have contracts with Burke and Summersbury. They are supposed to provide dedicated ambulance to those two communities. And when one's busy, they may not be able to provide to the other. And stewards is a busy, a busy outfit. Uh, so then they have to rely on mutual aid. And the mutual aid kind of gets picked clean pretty quickly. So eventually there's times when it's a long run, they may have to bring an ambulance from Kittery up here to serve for it because the primary truck in this area is busy. So there's a lot of moving parts on the ambulance service and how it all fits together. That's one reason why in our fire department now we have eight, ten of us that are EMTs. So that's one reason why we run with York. And whenever Dover comes into town as a medical aid, mutual aid, we respond with them every single time they come to town. But again, it's to provide so they know where to go, provide some extra manpower, so we can better serve our, our community. The last issue that you could probably use if you wanted to explore was whether or not this community wanted to start its own ambulance service and put it within the firehouse, which is how, which is another option. Stewart's is privately owned, they do their own thing. I would probably guesstimate that 60 to 70 percent of EMS services in this country are run within a fire department. Dover does it. Salem does it. Portsmouth does it. Rochester has their own entity because they were in Frisbee. But most communities, that is one thing that's combined between the two. It's a natural fit. Guys get trained as firefighters, they get trained on the, group, on the EMS side of things. They're always in place, they have the equipment, the training, and expertise. Private entities is a little bit more hurdles that they have to jump through to make that fit. So that's like the four options that we have here. Did I go too fast? Did I go too fast? That's all so it, like, it sounds like York and Dover are our best options. Um, and I say that for a couple of reasons. Um, the, this town doesn't have the tax base um, to support that kind of system, and we have all this competition right around us. So I would propose we go back to York and Dover and get proposals. Well, I can tell you one thing right now, as far as Dover goes, that I'm spending six figures to so begin to talk to them. So maybe it's York. <laughs> and, and that's probably a super conservative estimate, Kim. Yeah. We looked at this a few years ago. The way that they would have to make it work is they'd have to have two people put on their additional shift into running here. They would have to make at least a hundred thousand dollars or better um, on the enterprise side on what I'm talking about, hauling patients. Um, and I get the numbers every month okay, I'm talking about what your animals come into town and what they buy, mm -hmm. how many transports they do. Who got close to that? So if they only haul twenty thousand dollars, the city goes going to run eight thousand dollars out of that community to support the ambulance. Are and there that's any drawbacks to York? Drawbacks to York. You want to answer that one? So can we just go ahead? So I'm just gonna throw in two cents for a minute. So there was an email from two residents actually about York and how they recently dropped the crossbow ship, which you know, I don't want to guess on how many people in Wallace would have Blue Cross Blue Shield, but I would be willing to bet it's in the 20 to 40 percent of the So that's a factor, too, to think about in the big picture. And I know that may not be the only factor, but, you know, there was a couple of interesting emails that I read about this, that, you know, if someone was expecting to pay $200 for the hospital, and all of a sudden they charge $1,600. Yeah, it's, it's, I heard that. it's a concern. Oh, it definitely is a concern. So, and how their billing practices are run is right. not anything that we as a community can, can have to put on. I agree. Well, well, hold the phone, though. I'm wondering if that's really true. Because what you've said to me is that they need our $36,000 a year to survive. So 
you know, a contract which is not yet signed is a point of negotiation. So we do have a problem. So, I, you know, I, I'm wondering if that can be a discussion and something that we could address in the contract. Um, or, or is there a way that we could have a firefighter on their board to, like, lend a voice and, and, and be part of governance? And would that cost any money? Or, you know, how do we... You know, there's a problem. I don't think that means we throw the baby out with the bathwater, the best baby we have. Like, like, how can we fix that? Yeah, so, so there's a couple of things around that. Um, one of the things that's unique to New York that they do offer is you can actually buy a membership in yeah. New York and have your medical you know, if you're needing ambulance, it's actually covered as part of that membership. Um, that's an, you know, an option that could help with some of that. The town could look at that and say, "Hey, you know, we're estimating that there's 30 percent of our our population that has blue cross. That the town decides it wants to pay more than the contract. At the end of the day, they need to make a certain amount of money to survive. Mm -hmm. So if we're giving them 36,000, and they need an additional, you know, they're getting another 30 in billing or whatever it is for them. If we say you have to pay." Blue Cross Blue Shields, or you can't charge any more than $200, you're going to have to make that on the contract. So the question is, is do you want taxpayers to pay for that, or do you want the person that's requesting the service to pay for it? Ultimately, that's up to the select board. Um, to answer the initial question, there's several firefighters that work in multiple places. And the feedback that we've gotten from them is that the care that they receive from your ambulance is of higher quality and caliber than what they see given by students. Dover, the advantage of them is it's always going to be a medic. A lot of times it's two medics that come on the ambulance. There are times, probably maybe one day a week, that New York is coming based at the advanced level. If it requires a paramedic, they will call Dover for a paramedic intercept. But if you look at the level of care, there's basic EMPs, there's advanced EMPs, and then there's paramedics. So there's certain times that, that work is coming slightly less experience training than a paramedic. The other thing that I think is important for the select board to know is the investment that New York is making in the community. So they just bought a brand new ambulance with a brand new stretcher that will be put in service in early, early August to serve the community. That's a huge investment in the community to provide for you know, care. And going back, you probably always see the flyer that you've got the family do it on a daily basis. You've never gotten that? No. We do this little flyer. Yeah, I see it. I, 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 like, I like Kim's idea about, you know, I, I would like to be able to work with New York and get a contract signed with them, but I think that's a best option. Well, I think if we can find out why they dropped Blue Cross Blue Shield, but the reimbursement's not good enough. Like, right. That I think if we can open a dialogue, and they might not be willing to have that dialogue, I don't know. But I don't know about that either. I mean, it, it, it doesn't mean you cannot be asking. I mean, it, it must affect their other communities they serve. Well, they're they're doing the same thing, I'm sure. I'm well, sure. Well, well, on the well. flip side of that, you know, I wouldn't mind us going to Dover, but it's already selling you guys as cost I, But I feel like we can't make that presumption. Like, there's no reason that I we shouldn't have them. a conversation. You know, and get a price. You can always say no. Um, I think, you know, always picking the first option isn't the right answer, but we need to do more research. You want me to reach out to Dover, I'll give you a no. Yeah, yeah, I think we should get a written proposal from them. And from York, you know, what the new contract, um, you know, update would be. Just so we can take a look. So I, I believe we've already paid New York. We haven't paid it yet. No. Right. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say that we would pay that until that contract is worked out and signed. It agreed, but we would have to pay part of it. We have gotten six months of service, yes. service yes. now, plus eight. So. Yes. Don't forget it. We're going with somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> but as Sean said, they have been able to do some good work. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
see, get inside their ambulance so you can see. But this is where we go. But the ambulance is, for the most part, pretty much ambulances. Some kind of walk on perfect skill level. But at least you can see what is coming into town and serving the constituents. So that's them making that investment. So I well, they put it down here. They could have very easily put it in York. We wouldn't have seen it. We still have their, their backup and their older equipment. They are putting this new piece. New ambulance is running $100,000 easy. To serve our community. So, so the, one, the one thing I'll say about York, and this is just one of my thought processes, when I first started, it was like, well, it's my first movie. It's at the town. It's at the fire station. And we're talking about COVID. And York, the ambulance came in. They gave us about a 45 minute presentation about hygiene and stuff like that. That was, it was, it was beneficial. So, you know, they worked with the community pretty well. I don't know if you guys remember that. That was the first time I was sitting on the psych board. And I was a little bit impressed by the EMTs and how they can they present themselves. So, that's something I'll say about you. So, next steps is you're going to give us a number for Dover while we continue to work. Talk. Hold on to your head. I don't need you to know. Okay. I think the last time we looked at the voltage from Stewart's and York, it was $200,000, $225,000. Between Stewart's and York? That was just over. Scott. This is Dover's. Yeah. Wow. We have changed now. Uh, you know, the, the other thing to think about with Dover now is, is that they moved there and they're not at Central Station. So the ambulance is coming from the north well, and north and so the south. It's not better than Stewart, it's really, I mean, you got to go through downtown Dover. Right, if they were to add a third so ambulance out of Central Station, which is very And that, that of course, so, the so, yeah, right. Well, the other thing with Stewart's, uh, when they came, they gave a good proposal. You remember what their proposal was? That's Paul Revise. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was American Ambulance. Yes, yeah, that's, American. that's three or four different things. I was going to ask what happened to American. So that, um, Morphed into the storage um, Essentially, Paul Revise contacted me, I think it was last year, about the contract. Um, so do, can we see that last um, proposal um, that they gave us? Just for like, the consent to the last contract. I can't. I'll see if we got anything. I'm not sure that we got a physical paper proposal from them. I think it was more that in person, yeah. yes, we can yeah. offer you all these services and whatever, and by the way, it was free. It was more of a, um, a conversation and a sales pitch than a, I don't know that there was anything physically, but I'll, I'll see if I can, I'll look and see if there was anything. Is the main concern with them timeliness? It's actually available. So, if you look, you listen to the radios like I do. Um, York is going to Berwick several times a week because Stewart's not available. So Stewart's guarantees an ambulance for summer's worth. There are certain times of the day that they have a Berwick truck. Outside of that, it's a transfer truck if it's not available, if it's available and not on transfers. But as the chief said, their primary money maker is the new transfers. So, you know, all of a sudden you dial 911 and it goes to source, they don't have somebody that has to go to the next, possibly to the next. Uh, yeah, and then we track that, if that happens too many times, then it becomes other issues because mutual is only good for some You can't keep relying on them out of the business. And, and that puts stop to that in a quick fashion. So again, if we, if we summarize that part of the stewards and one is because the response time is so far away, two is availability, and as Sean had stated before, we have people that work for stewards, York, and Dover within the fire station right now, and they can tell you the extent of nothing to stand. Okay. Anything else for us tonight? Yes, you guys have a question. I wanted to bring that up. Caroline and I have already had a discussion on the contract thing, so I hope I've covers all the bases that we can and hit all the options that are available to us pretty much. Um, yep. And we'll talk to Dover. I will get you that.
away. One is setting a precedent, putting um, private property on town property, 
and also that's my first um, one. Yeah. plowing, potential plowing damage if you have private people plowing the town roads. There is no real other solution because there is no other place to put the dumpster because the, well, the, the solution that seemed to work last winter was they rolled it out of the way. It out of the way. We can't so we could plow it straight and then they put it and I, I, to me that that worked out. I think well, you just don't want to have to keep it. I, I, well, I, I this is the first I heard of it when I saw you know when you mentioned it the other day. I thought that it would have been resolved because I thought that was going to be I the big thing, and that was. Yeah. So I went down and went to this. Did you dump this today? So we got the blue one at the end of the street. Correct. And That's we the, the one red one, one, right? I don't even know who that one is. Okay, so I don't care about the red. No well, not to say that the red one's not an issue, though. But, but we the have. The red one's on private property. We don't care about that. Maybe, right? maybe not. Okay. But we don't know. But the blue one is on. The blue one right there I looked at today is on town property. It's in a road, yes. Just because it's a dead end doesn't mean it's not still a road. The road technically goes through that park. Cross Street continues through the park. Yeah. So, so let's just tick off our options here. Tell them to get the dumpster out of our road. Continue to do what we did last year. They have to move it every time it snows. And wait for us to come plow, because we're not making a special trip. We're going to do a great right plow. Um, put the dumpster on town-owned land and rearrange the sign and rearrange the coordinates. Um, okay, any other options in this end? I think those are your options. So, I mean, the best option, which we can't control, is option number two. Okay, we just want to turn the plow, they side out of the way, we plow. And, um, I think they should lose one of their parking spaces and put it on your own property. I guess oh, that's I guess that's another option. option, yes. Or do they have the garbage pick up? Instead of a dumpster? You know, <laughs> oh, they can hire people. They're oh, correct. Okay, yeah, if you want to look at that. So, 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 could you expand on your thought just for a second? So I understand what you're saying. So they just move the dumpster over to where their property is and leave it right on their property and it's not an issue. Not an issue for us. It's probably an issue for them losing a parking spot. No. They, they don't really have a spot except for a parking spot. So a tenant is going to lose a parking spot, which is, you know, Probably not more than an inconvenience, except in the winter. But you know, winter it's going to be a problem off street. Right. But the other option is if they moved it to where the last, if they could push it back a little bit off the last parking spot. It's not a big dumpster. It was at the end of their parking spot where they could still drive in. You know, like cut out the grass or the trees a bit, put it there. It, it won't be in the way for us to plow. Mm -hmm. I mean, it should be on their property. It sounds like the best option is to let them deal with it on the property. Can we, like, can we have, can we have a George just talk to him and say, hey, let's go to the or Do you probably look that nice and slide it over? And then I, I, we'll, we'll plow you out all year and that'll be an issue. I, I would say you do that, but but when you do that, that it, um, be yeah. clear what's not an option. When you do that, like, want, do I'm this, that, or the other thing, but you're not doing this. And I don't want to put him in a conflict with a town, a town resident, so maybe that's not the best thing. Yeah. 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 Well, how did this, these people came to you? Um, they bought the property, not fully understanding what was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, because they bought the property, not fully understanding what its situation was, that they kind of got into. There's no parking in front of the house, it's a strange Um, I mean, do you feel comfortable reaching out? I'm perfectly happy with that. Okay. Once I understand from the board, what the I think what you're saying is figure it out on your property, but you're not moving it over next to the other dumpster. So you can either move the dumpster back and forth or find a parking space for it, but it's not going over next to the right one. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, it, you know, and we would get those. No. It wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> I, I don't know who allowed it. I didn't even know we plowed that section of the road until this all came up last year. So. Because I don't think we did we until did. We she did. brought it up that it was a problem because the previous homeowner would plow it out. We also need to tell them that they need to stop plowing town roads. Well, that, that ended last year. 
they didn't have. Oh, they did have. Well, a credit. because they were moving it back and forth, it but I mean, ended. For the, so, so I think what the board might also want to say is it can no longer be in the dead end because if it's in the dead end, unless unless they're promising to move it at every snowstorm, because you will not plow the town <laughs> road. Is that what you're also saying? No, we're going to plow town. We're going to well, plow well, town road, but the, I'm sorry, to they out, basically not. needs to be out of the way. I would right. Say, so, so property. if they leave it there, they're going to move it back and forth, but they are not going to be plowing the town road. Is that correct? Yes. Got it. Okay. Okay. I think we're good. Um, that one. Um, so Main Street parking. Um, I know the the highway safety committee in that. Um, I don't know if you want to share with us. So. Sure. Um, so the Highway Safety Committee met um, in the absence of the chair. Um, I provided um, a summary of the minutes of the meeting um, to the select board, and I propose that we bring it forward uh, um, for discussion at the select board meeting um, with the chief of um, based on the chief of police's um, suggestions and George Gilmet's suggestions to allow some limited parking um, uh, in front of um, certain residents. And um, so, I, unfortunately, Chief is doing uh, Maybe Joyce. Is in the hall. Okay. Um, so, the, the board may want to quickly hear um, the recommendations of um, George and, and John. Um, and from that, I propose that we take steps forward and um, plan for a public hearing. Okay. George, do you want to go first? Okay, uh, if, if we decide to put cotton back there, we need to put some gravel in and set loam where the grass is. Not suggesting paving it, but I'd back gravel like you did in front of uh, the small residence. Mm -hmm. And that would allow the pot there without doing, you know, with minimal damage to uh, the, you know, the ground. Yep. So that's, that's one of the options I think we should do if we decide to do that. Uh, and, and what would that cost? Just ballpark? Probably going to be that maybe a load of two in each driveway. So it's, you know, uh, it's nine seventy five a ton what we're paying for it now. Maybe $150. Maybe $150. Yeah, it's eight, it's eight times per load. So it's, you know, maybe a couple of loads. Okay. Just very good, you know. Location. And we, have, we should take the boom out of it, you know, so it's not Make it proper. Yeah, it's just it's another heat setting. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Was, was that the, that's the proposal? Um, so, uh, actually, uh, what you wanted, uh, if you would just kind of summarize sure. your recommendations. So, George and I went out there the day before we held the meeting, and, and I know Mr. Hill has spoken about the previous, so I'm just new to this committee. I wasn't part of the committee before, so these are my thoughts. I'm not speaking for the committee before I join. This is me going forward. Yeah. So, yes, I was concerned about the line of sight. So, as you come into town by Locust Street, there is a curve, and I want parking to be in a clear line of sight. So that's what I recommended, is that if it's not blocking, either getting out of Foundry Street both ways, or Locust Street both ways, and it's a clear line of sight out of that curve, I'm okay with it. And right now, that's only three houses. The other thought I have is cars can't be on the road and they can't be on the sidewalks. So I would say small compact cars only that are able to fit in that area. So what I did was I took my uh, personal cruiser and I went out there and I parked it with George and maybe that much room on either side. So anything bigger than my cruiser won't fit in there. Okay. I'm just wondering how we write that into a parking ordinance, but I was going to say compact cars only. Exactly. Yes. And by address. Okay. And so there is, if that tree was removed, and I'm assuming it's in front of your house, is no? Um, Next to his. Okay. So I think we. <laughs> so go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. So if that tree were to be removed, that would open it up more. Yeah. But right now it is blocking the line of sight. So um, the next house down from there, what number is that, Dave? Um, the next house from me. Yes. Um, I'm guessing it'd be six seventeen. 
It's on 621, 619. So I think it's 617. So it would then kind of open up to another residence to potentially have parking there. Um, but that would mean a tree. Like a yeah, I'm, I'm not in favor of cutting down a tree. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, I think we should plant more trees there. But that's my nice. that's my opinion. Um, okay, Paul, did you have any questions? Um, Not right now. Okay, so at this point, I I think we need to decide whether we want to um, consider that proposal and um, go back to another public hearing. Um, I mean, this was. Um, I have a motion that we plan for a public heating area um, um, for Main Street Park. Okay. I'll second that. Um, any further discussion on that? Yes, further discussion. Um, so you can plan a public hearing, but but you need to be proposing something at the public hearing. So so would you be willing to specify in your motion? Are you proposing that you, mm -hmm. you know, at the public hearing, are you saying that you want to propose the Highway Safety Committee's recommendation, is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Would you like me to restate that? No, it's fine. I think we... I think it's... I think we I get think the idea. Okay, 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 thank okay. you. Um, okay, why don't we vote on, on that? Um, so, all in favor of that motion? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, next, we need to... We can figure out a date that's going to work. Um, it needs to be at minimum two weeks out. Um, I would advocate that, um, because I, I don't want this coming back again, um, that we prepare. We get plenty of people plenty of time, but I don't know how you notified people the last time it was mail or flyers and doors. This most recent time was mail in addition to the traditional way, though that's okay. not really required given the topic of the Um, so we have a regularly scheduled meeting the 9th, which is not two weeks away. Um, we have a meeting the 16th, which is slated to be um, strategic planning. Um, the 23rd of August. So I'm, I'm imagining we would have this public hearing directly before I select the meeting. Oh, okay. Um, it, or we can choose a different night altogether. But I, I feel like... Um could take up time. Yes. Okay. Um, but it, could we do it on like a different night or so? Sure. If people are uh, free. So maybe like. So we have the 23rd as a sub good view? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe the 18th? 18th. Is it Wednesday? It's on Except to say that we don't have CIP, mm -hmm. which typically means on a Wednesday. Right. So if just to keep, since since that works for the CIP people, I don't know if you all would be willing to do a Thursday. That might be or a Tuesday. That's not planning board. So it's the twenty fourth. Tuesday. Yeah, I don't have my regular calendar. Okay. Um, but I'll say that's probably fine. Okay. Yeah. Do we need to include the highway safety committee? Um, the rest uh, of the committee. That would be well? preferable. Um, at so our last public calls. hearing, I requested they come and know. So, so we can only request. So just the last hotel. three, which was George, John, and myself. Um, yeah. And and is that at six thirty? Um, that's fine with me. August 24th. August 24th, 6.30. Sounds good. Okay. Anything else, George? <laughs> so now you have that look in your eyes that you want to spend some money. We want to discuss before we spend. Yes, of course. We do. It's getting late this season if we want to get some more stuff done. Yep. So I was looking at the numbers from. Thank you for coming. From Brett, the uh, highway. Yep. <laughs> I spent twelve nine fifty on 
the hot county guide rails back early in the year when we had the accident. Right. So we subtract that, we come up to 242. Sligo will come into 131 south. I'm thinking it's going to be a little less than that. So would that brings us down to $100,350. Okay. Climate Road, if we want to do that, we can come in at $85,395. Okay. 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 We need Sligo Road gravel, so there's $5,000. So the other projects that we talked about last time, Town Hall and Hall Road. Okay. I'm saying there's a town hall, should that be on the road money or should that come up something else? Um there's not a lot of something else. Yeah, there's money. Not a lot of at least if, if you're inferring <laughs> is it um, town hall building maintenance, I think that's a good place to put the expense, but there's not budget money there. There's certainly extra budget money as you saw from the rebudgeting worksheet, but if you wanted to put it on town hall maintenance rather than road paving, you certainly could. Yeah. Um, I will only say that when we developed the budget last year, town hall was in the paving line. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll put a dent on the climate growth. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I, thought, I thought that line was allocated for road resurfacing. And not necessarily That's why I questioned it. Right. I know we did, when I mean, we had extra at the end, we used it to help the fire department fix that patch in front of the fire mm -hmm. station. And stuff like that. But, uh, I mean, there could be more money that comes. I mean, this numbers could be bought. I mean, the gravel may not be five thousand dollars you know. Right, but and then you know, do things like that. And we still got to put a culvert in on Slyco. I mean, on Clement before we, uh, and that would be around two thousand dollars with no roof system. So, Kim, I don't know. Are you, are you saying that because the parking lot's not a road, mm -hmm. we wouldn't take it from there? I um, well, I disagree. Um, I thought the one item was road resurfacing, so I thought it was allocated for roads. Which, but I did notice that they did the fire department. And, um, I don't think it's restricted. Um, I think it's open to interpretation. Okay. When we develop the, I'll say it again, oh. when we develop the budget. Is there any type of money coming out of that we can get some money out of? From the uh, ARPA fund? From COVID and stuff? Um, yes, with, with any with any uh, luck, yes. I mean, there, there's money that's been earmarked. Um, I, I don't know if roads are So, um, the included. larger part, pot of money can be used for, for as much as it applies to Rollins for the allowable uses. Stormwater, sewer, and water infrastructure are, are what kind of, um, are, are the obvious choices. So, stormwater, so I would think with ARPA funds you could repair some catch basins, for example, um, but in terms of road resurfacing, not. Except that um, part of what you can use the, um, the ARPA funds is for um, reimbursement from lost revenue, which isn't necessarily calculated actual lost revenue, but they give you a calculator to figure that out, um, which we haven't done yet. That lost revenue is less restricted. So it looks like, and, and we're, you know, they're still developing guidance, so, you know, this is um, still kind of fuzzy, but that's less restricted, and it looks like those funds could potentially be used for road resurfacing and other infrastructure projects. But it's severely reduced. It's only lost revenue, so you're looking at, you know, I don't know, twenty to $80,000 or something. I'm not thinking it's, I, so, but I don't know. Um, but we'd have to calculate that. That's, that's not this year. The, 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 big, the big point is, it's, that's not going to help you this year. I'm sorry, George, besides the, um, what's the uh, Sligo Road? What did you think we would have left? Could you say? Sligo Road 131.7 was the total. Yeah. But we still got to get gravel money. Gravel out of that, so it would be another five. Well, five high. Five ish. Okay. And uh, so, um, what's left in our budget? I'm sorry, what was... We 
$700,000. Well, after Sligo's paving would have been $100,000, $350,000. $100,000. $100,000. Yeah. Okay. And what was the cost of the town hall? Seventeen. 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 Eight. Eight. So, um, <clears throat> so is there is there is this money somewhere in um, buildings, government buildings, or another fund that we could actually use that and put that money towards road? You have unallocated budget money. In other, so um, if you if you look at what I call the rebudgeting worksheet, which is just it's just a worksheet, like it's not a technical. It's um, it's it's my estimation of where you need money and where you can save money. So it's not a board approved document, but it, it will show you if you look at the very bottom. You know, so I've put money where you need it. I've taken it where I don't think you will. And then there's still another something like eighty-seven thousand dollars of you know. So, so you still have your $24,000 in contingency. You still have everything fully funded at its budget line, um, except for like full-time salaries because the police department hasn't been fully staffed, some things like that. So um, you have $87,000, according to how I've reworked things, of, of unallocated budget dollars. So that's in addition to whatever the paving line is. As far as the town hall maintenance account goes, it's budgeted at 15000 You've got eight thousand going to the portico. We've had a number of plumbing issues, um, and then I'm not sure what else. So you know there may be a little bit of money there, but we also haven't done the mold remediation that we need to do, which is probably thirty five hundred dollars. So um, if there's money left in there, it's not a lot. Hey, Carol, I had a question on the culvert. Is that ten thousand dollars a year? It is ten thousand dollars a year that we have been putting into a fund. Okay. okay. So what? Are so we so the fund is going up. Um, I don't know offhand, but if you go to the website and go to the town report, it's in the financial documents folder. Um, I think it might be forty or fifty, but I'm I'm not sure. There's definitely okay, money because, in there. Uh, Part of this twelve nine fifty that we took out for the guy reel, the guy reel was eleven something. So there's a thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars there that we use. We, we here put non uh, the cross prospect tree, which is the culvert job. That could have come out of the culvert fund. So that's that's a board decision about right. whether or not you want to take um, an expense and put it in the culvert fund, or do you want to save the culvert fund for you know a bigger project, or you know like we've got some other issues. So so. That's, you right. certainly could. So if, if I'm doing my math right, if we, if we picked Clement at around $86,000 and Town Hall at 18, we've got to kind of forget about Paul Road. That's 104. Um, so I don't, I don't think we have a huge problem here. Like we wanted to fund all of these, all of these efforts. Um, I'm just like, we never talked about Clement before, and I, I agree that it's no, and and, not and we great. didn't. But where I saw that we couldn't do Jesse Go, mm -hmm. and to use the money, and that road is getting rough. We're going to end up next year. Huh? Jesse Go next year. Talking about we can push this. That's up to you people. What do you want to do next year? Yeah. But I mean, Clement Road is uh, is falling apart. We we have water and, crossing the road all yeah, the time. Okay with it too. Yeah. I think if you have and I think a ship ship and overlay will buy us. You know, the highest five, seven years on okay. that road. Yeah, we're going to have to get into major construction. And that is a heavy traffic road, also. So, you know, uh, that's why I ran the number, I get that number, because it's getting late in the season to get any paving done. Yeah. Rocks it with the slide, you know, that we could do a shipment overlay. And they would have got Jesse Go done if we had the money, but we don't. So, so you said that we also have to do a cover. We got to put a cover in, and that's. The non jerusalem system, we have one section of pipe. We need to buy one section of pipe for just under $400. And then some gravel, so that would be minimal to fix that pot. So I, I figured $2,000 would take care of that whole okay. thing. But 12 of that, I mean, it is a culvert. So yeah. Again, you can take that out of the culvert fund, so that $1,200 you have to use. So it would be an additional couple thousand dollars um, in estimation work? 
that's uh, well, 1,200, yeah, the total to do the job would be about 2,000, you know, the non, norms portion would be 1,200, because we're going to be doing it, we'll use our gravel and okay. what have you. Just that we need an estimator to do it because we don't have room to set the back hole up because of the way the road is built. Get in there and dig that. What number of people do that So between Town Hall and Clement, I, I didn't add that 2,000, but I, I think we can take that from the public fund. 104,000, which is right in the ballpark of what you're going to have left after the slide. Down. I so, believe Sligo is going to come in a little bit under, but uh, not positive on that until I see numbers. You can also use other project funds. You don't right, need to right, right. We don't need to stay with it. Yeah. But, you know, um, I'm, I'm okay with moving forward. With, uh, tell them all the parking lot's a disaster. Mm -hmm. Wait, what needs to be addressed? Um, in my opinion. Um, and Clement, you know, I drove down the other day and it's, it's getting pretty bad. So. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you, um, yeah, if you have purchase orders, which we'll just look here. So we're not going to do all. Yeah, that's I think, the only one we can skip on that. Okay. Uh, so that's sixty-eight hundred dollars. We won't have. I put the PO in for the full amount of thirty thousand six hundred with for KC payment, but we can eliminate that sixty-eight hundred. Okay. So. Uh, do you want to just the other KC payment for the town hall project? You can finish the sidewalks, which was last year's money. Right, which comes out of a totally separate fund. So that would be seventeen eight for uh, the parking lot and six thousand for the finished sidewalk from the town hall down to Crown uh, Street. Okay. okay. Is KC who we used last year? Or are you using? No, we used the land that we got business. So I can get more pricing, but it's. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean those. He, he's the one that he did the work on uh, for uh, the water district and stuff on uh, Willie Street. Everything seemed to come out good. And he actually did the overlay and on the Scarlet Circle. So you're going to be hearing about that. That road has been paved. Uh, okay. So you have a PO that Okay, is that now PO would be uh, 1985 for Casey Payment. Uh, oh, yeah, I think the new amount is 23.8. You might want to check on that. Is your proposal from KC for Clement River as well? No, he, no, that would be Brox. Oh. So, if we could have a motion uh, for purchase order 1985, what's the vote though? The amount of, you said 23? 23,800. I'm going to make the motion for PO 1985 to 23,800. Okay. To KC Paving. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty. And how about for Clyde? Do you have a... I'm not doing for Brock shit, but I have the contract here. Okay. I, I think we can move it and okay. do that. I got enough. I can give you a PO now okay. and I can just put it on it. And that will be the paving of Climate Road 1988. That's $85,395. You say that what? About? $85,395. So I'll make the motion for a payment of Clement, uh, PO number 1988, for amount of 18, excuse me, 85,395. That's to Brock's industry. Just to Brock's industry. Thank you. Okay. Um, one question. So do we, are we going to expect also to have to do gravel on the sides of Clement? It will be sad, but it's not going to be nowhere near what it was on oh, like Sligo where it drops off so far. Yeah. You're going to use a lot more ground. And we could probably do it in that 5,000, I think, if, you know, okay. close. Right. Um, we probably want to make sure to um, notify the public that that road's going to be closed. Right, I think we ought to get something to notify when, them. Of, yeah. When we have a date, can we have time frame? Mm -hmm. When you have time. Yeah, uh, but we'll have to close it to do the call, but also. 
you know, waiting. They got all these trees packed to take down. You know, I mean, but you know, that, they skip over them because they're so big. They cost money for them to take down. Also, I'm sure. So, has anybody had a conversation about these things? I, I don't even know who to talk to. I do. I, I can find out. My across and that's fine because my Irving, across the street is we're still looking long. a couple months out to have Irving do this, but we do have trees that gotta come down for Irving to take down too. So, but if we can move them around and still use the money for something else, if Heather Swiss wants to take them down, yes, let's do that. I can, uh, I can just reach out to my neighbor because I know that he's on my on my road. He has marked all the trees for what he's gonna do. Oh, okay. So, uh, hopefully, there's an the, idea. Where three on Sligo Road. Uh, Again, on our in the property, I believe in the roadway property line on the other side of Mike says he doesn't have a problem dropping them into the field and then we cut them up. On Bear Huh? On Bear Road. On Bear Road. Just over the hill on Bear yes. Road. Those yep. three dead ones. Yep. So he doesn't have a problem cutting those kind of trees, but he doesn't want to get into where it takes bucket work and stuff because we don't have a bucket. So the stuff that we can take down, we'll take down. But, you know, so we just we need to get permission from the landowner to. Like that, yeah, that uh, we'll have to talk to them to be able to that. Is that um, I'm not to, sure. Depending on which side of the road, it's either Peter T. Paul. Um, it's standing down the hill, those feet. That yeah. Sure. I don't know if that's self or not. It's definitely not self. Okay. I don't know which that field where the chickens are sometimes. Wait, are we talking bear or spider? Excuse me. Just over the hill on Bear, heading towards Rome, uh, Dover. Towards Dover. Well, by Sligo Road, right. and right. It's, there's a house on the corner, so. and it's just beyond that, there's three dead pines. The silt doesn't have road frontage on Bear. No? Or that Sligo. No. Mm -hmm. I, thought I, saw the, I thought I saw a tag on one of the tree that said silt. So. Yeah. Well, we'll figure it out. Okay. Well, we'll figure it out. I, I, uh, I, yeah, okay, it's, so it's, Paul's going to talk to his. Neighbor, I can, I can talk to them find out they got a date of when that if that's not feasible, then we'll move forward to pretty much it. Yeah. Sounds sound okay. Yeah, I mean, there's still a couple months out to get them to come in and do work once we sign the PO. Okay. Okay. I think I can, unless you got something for me. No. Okay. Um, do you have anything for us I do. <laughs> Just a little bit of money. Not a lot. You guys are sucking up for failure. <laughs> I have a PO for Atlantic Recycling. PO number is 1984. The dollar amount is $1,125. And this is to do the preventative maintenance on the two compactors and the two balers that we have. Something we do every year. There's $2,000 in the account on the budget for it. This is $1,125. Quotes uh, attached. Uh, Basically going through the two, the four compactors that we have, the four pieces of equipment we have, checking them all over, checking the oils, and I'm not changing the oil because changing the oil was pretty expensive, yeah. and I think we can do that every other year. Okay. Uh, it does include taking oil samples out of each piece of equipment, sending it off. Uh, the oils in these pieces of equipment, uh, it also includes changing the filters, but not the oil. But the oil in these things, the contaminants are minor. They don't get a lot of contaminants in them like a, like an engine does, where engines have blow-by and whatnot. These are just oil going through a pump and okay. back through. Um, so the chance of getting contaminants is small. Your contaminants basically is wear in the, in the pumps. So they're going to take samples of those, send those off. And if it comes back that we have issues, then we can look further. But this is doing a complete preventative maintenance on them. Um, do we have a motion for a forgiveness? Yeah, I'll move forward with uh, PO 1984 for Atlantic Disposal. Atlantic Recycling. Recycling, sorry. Atlantic yeah. Recycling yeah. for $1,125 to do permanent maintenance on the compactors. All right. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Any discussion on 1984? No. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Do you need me to sign this contract? I don't. I, there might be a spot on the back page to sign. Authorized signature. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, 
Anything else then? A couple things. Uh, does not involve any money immediately. Uh, just a, an FYI, Dover is having their hazardous waste, uh, household hazardous waste day, okay. which we are a part of. Uh, I've gotten a couple of phone calls and emails, and I think you've gotten a couple too, Caroline. And we are part of it. It's August 28th this year. Dover Community Service Garage, uh, 271 Mass Road. And that runs from 8.30 in the morning to 12.30. I believe that's a Saturday. Uh, so I just wanted to make you folks and the public aware of that. Oh, you said it there again, I'm sorry. Sure, it is uh, August 28th. 8.30 to 12.30? 8.30 to 12.30. And we have money budgeted for that. Yes. $2,700. Yeah. Uh, can, can, can we post something at the transfer station? It's already posted. Yep, yeah, it's on the TV screen over there. And today I made uh, uh, 200 copies of this flyer here, and those are going to be handed out tomorrow and Saturday. Good. Until we run out, we'll get some more. Great. Uh, and there's a copy that you can post here somewhere, if you wish. Because okay. since we're paying for it, models of the residents take advantage of what they can. Yep, yep. That flyer says what they can bring and what they can't bring. So we're trying to get it in front of the public to let them know. And there's a phone number on there if people have a question. Okay. Uh, back along, I had mentioned about uh, the container that we got and that I had put in for a grant. And I think I might have told you already that we personally were told. Yeah. Um, I have the letter that states we did get the money for the grant, $797. Uh, the check, I think Chuck already has the check, it's already deposited. Uh, so that was great to get that back. This was back in June that, I, that we got this. Um, I put in for the grant. Uh, really early spring. Thank you. So, so we're going to get that. This, is, this will be the second grant that we've gotten from the Hampshire School so cool. through Sounds NRA. Good. So there's a letter you folks have to apply. Thank you. And yeah, that's all I have. Awesome. Does anyone have anything for Ed? Any questions? No, I can't keep up the good part. Thank you. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah, we had a little bump the other day um, as far as a patron disposing of some things in the wrong spot, but it was all taken care of. So, let's hope the individual will be charged accordingly and move on. Good. So. Oh, actually, I do have um, mm. something. What are we doing to enforce stickers? Just the guys checking to make sure that they have them. And that was one of the issues with the person that was up for that. Okay. Um, so, okay. so I, they, do, they do look to see. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's why we changed the location of the stickers. To the driver's side, because two of the spots, two out of the, most of the time when cars pull in, that's the side that we see. So, okay. Yep, yep, they do check, and I've actually I've sold a couple of stickers in the last two weeks. So, we still have people that come in and say, I did say, some of them are people new to town, and whatnot. So, where's the little new police ship up there? Okay. Uh, we did the other day, it worked out well. Yes. One of the reasons I ask is because I think I've seen people going with Connecticut plates, and um, which means they probably have, maybe even if they are residents, they probably have not registered their cars. So, so how are we getting? I'll, I'll reiterate that's the a good point. I mean, I've seen Massachusetts a few times, and I'm yeah. wondering maybe they have a second house here. But oh, whether I've ever done a sticker for a mass or an address, I have done. Uh, a couple of the state ones, but it was a business vehicle for someone that I know lives in town, and it's their own vehicle. It's uh, several of those. Do, yeah. do we sell stickers to people who aren't residents? No, they're residents. Okay. Yeah, they're they just have a company just that they oh, had a company okay. car or a company truck. Okay. So that's the and, uh, so it's registered for it's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I verified by looking at their by, by asking for their driver's license. Okay. So I go, you know, the, step, the next step to make sure that they're residents of, and sometimes they're being asked from to bring in a, you know, a power bill or something. Mm -hmm. So I don't make it super easy, but I don't, you know, I keep it reasonable. Okay. So, all right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ed. Great. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Yeah. Enjoy. Shh. Well, your ass is going to do this a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you get it before you did it. How is everyone? Good. Okay. Okay. I have two purchase orders tonight. Um, the first.
first is our the equipment budget, and this is mostly for our, well, all for our two new officers. So, Bryson starts the academy in a couple of weeks, and he will actually be starting this Sunday with us before he goes. So he'll be in-house for a couple of weeks, and then off he goes. So, he has been measured for his best, and unfortunately, William, um, we're just finishing up his background, so he's not on this yet, so he'll still need a best. But I had uh, Sergeant Pancock order everything else for William because it doesn't matter what the length is. So to get everything what William made best would be for $1,550.70 from AAA, AAA Police Supply. And that includes the shipping. One more time, do Sure. $1,550.70. Mm -hmm. One thousand one hundred fifty. Nope. One five one five seventy. What's the PO number on that? Nineteen forty-four. And who's the two? Triple A is five. Triple A. Sorry, PO number again. Nineteen forty-four. Is that triple A? A triple A A police. Like the company Triple A. <laughs> Is this all budgeted? As so, um, when we when we get moved first, and then we can look at that. So I right, move forward with uh, PO nineteen, sorry, forty four. For nineteen forty four, for the amount of one five one five seven for triple A A. For triple A police for supply. for police supplies. And do we have a second on that? Second. All right. Any uh, discussion on nineteen forty four? Um, just a, so, is this all part anticipated cost for new hires, and it was it budgeted? Yes. Okay. So we have a uniform budget and an equipment budget. So the reason I have this stuff in the equipment budget is the uniform is for the shirts, the pants, the boots. Uh, they'll each need a class A uniform, so that'll all come out of there. Why this stuff comes out of the equipment line? Okay. Just I was just curious if we were optimistic and thinking we're going to hire people, and this is how much it's going to cost us to. So the equipment line can be anything from tasers to um, anything you can think of that we'd outfit for the cruisers, um, maybe a new helmet for uh, a cruiser or a throw disc even for someone's in the river. So thank you. Right. Anything so, else? So, so I just want to make sure so it's an allocated loan every year. Yes. And sixteen thousand is my super fish what you you're handling for the deposit. Does that make sense to you? Yep. So what we did, and you weren't here when we first did this, was um, we're going to new vest carriers. They're going to be the ones that zip up, and most of our equipment will be up here to take the weight off our waist and help our packs and such. And that was the big thing for this year, because so must have an expired vest. So it was a perfect time to move forward and do something like this. And that's what the two new ones will also have. Okay. Exciting. They are. Good. Alright, all in favor of purchase order 1944? Aye. Aye. What else you got for us? So, ammo. We had a mission critical at the uh, start of this year when uh, Interim Chief Kelly was here. And I believe he brought the original purchase order for ammo to you folks. And again, this was so bringing you up to speed. And what we found was we were not anticipating two new hires and also Mitch Brooks is in Concord all week at the academy becoming a firearms instructor. That said, we need 3,600 rounds of flangible ammo, which is the lead free for shooting at the academy alone, plus uh, more practice rounds for pistol and a rifle. So I asked Will to put together what would be his need to get us through the year because we Again, yeah, didn't see this coming when we ordered it uh, earlier. So he's looking for three boxes of flangible, which is a thousand per box, um, two for practice pistol, which would be a thousand per box, and four for rifle, which would be 500 per box. So rifle would be 2,000 rounds, practice would be 2,000 rounds, then the flangible would be 3,000. Not again, it's just to get us back to where we need to be. So um, it will, we only have about 350 left in that ammo line because we did have to purchase all that stuff earlier in the year. But again, the equipment line could absorb this. So there is money in there that we could use out of the equipment line for that. And 
and this would be PO order 1943. Uh, sorry, $2,176.65. So, so I won't, let's move forward and ask some questions. So I won't follow the PO 1943 for $2,176.65 for ammo. Second. To approve. Oh, I'm sorry, to um, question. You, you can read off the appeal. So, uh, and I won't say it again, it was, uh, you know. If I may so, add. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Discussion. Sure. If I may add, um, the current price for ammo expires this October. And I expect with the shortage of ammo, that it is going to go through the ceiling. So it would be wise to buy it now before that new purchase price comes out. Okay. It's already through the ceiling. Yes, and very high. <laughs> it's buy. doubled, actually. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, any? Uh, so just, I was, I was, I think this copy of the budget is up to date, and you've only spent eleven hundred twenty-seven dollars. We actually have a about two thousand dollar one still pending. We are waiting on the ship. Oh, okay. Prior. Gotcha. 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 Okay. So. Okay. All in favor of 1943? Aye. 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 All right. This goes into the year, right? Yes. Yes, that will not be a problem. We just have to get it. We're still, again, waiting for that one we ordered probably back in February. So no, this is a time schedule. Yeah. Well, sort of. <laughs> We're still waiting. Pass those back. Anything else for us, Chief? I uh, I just want to make sure you got the email I sent to about the gazebo. I also have concerns, so I just want to make those known as well. Mm -hmm. Much like this answer. So mm -hmm. I put my two cents in there. I appreciate that. Other than that, I have nothing else. Okay. Do you have any updates on the uh, security and phone system? I was actually just talking to Chief Rutherford and uh, Assistant Chief out there and we're going to get together and start talking with some of the people that have come and give them quotes and ask them to come down and give us quotes at the same time. Great. And maybe we can you know, try and sneak in a two for one deal. Yeah. So, yeah, good uh, idea. Sean was going to give me all these shorts. Oh, he's, got some, he's, got some good, he's got some good information. Yeah, he's, right. He's pretty up to date on that stuff. Okay. So I think it would be good to use that info. Okay. We were talking before I came back in for that. Okay, great. Thank so, you. Well, Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, I'm here until all, all, all night. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You'll be here all night. Great. Um, all right, let's move on to town administration. Um, the Bicentennial Park request, um, we, we've heard from the chief. Um, the gentleman never got back to us. I think this ends. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say that um, we may want to consider having a contractor give us an estimate to repair it. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, like I said in the last meeting, I don't mind. I went down and looked at it. Mm -hmm. And I really believe if I, if me and like a couple of associates, a couple of friends, a couple of volunteers worked on it, it'd be like a full, full hour or a Saturday. So a town so sponsored volunteer? Type thing, yeah. You know, maybe get three or four volunteers. Because I was looking, it's really like a bench you need to fix, mm -hmm. and you know, three or four gallons of stain, and I think it would look. So it I would look pretty nice overall. I think, I, I think that's a great idea. I, I think what we would probably want is kind of what we talked about was like a scope of work, right? Um, and a waiver of liability. Yep. I don't know, um, but the, the, an outside group. With a political no, I affiliation, I think I don't think we need to go the appropriate there. use of um, maintaining our the towns of the to right. Okay. I mean, it's, it's it was a nice nice it's offer. It's a it's a nice offer. But, um, but okay, I don't think we even necessarily need to vote on that. No. I think there's a clear consensus. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. That's great. Um, for 2022 budget planning, um, so Caroline printed out the proposed um, meeting schedule. Um, yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. 
I don't, I, it seems doable to me. Okay. I mean, it's, it's a little compact, but it's something that we really want to move forward anyway, so. Yep. Um, the original, I think, I don't know if you saw the original schedule. It was a little, little more compact. It was, it was, it was, that would have been too hard to, to move. So if, if everyone here is okay, I'll email this back to the budget committee and um, let them know. I just want to bring to your attention, um, you might either discuss it or else bring to the select board the, to the budget committee's attention that you, you haven't discussed the dates for next year, um, the, the deliberative session. That you have one week from a Saturday to a Saturday to have um, the town budget public hearing and also separately the deliberative session. Okay. So I plugged in dates and the date I plugged in here for the deliberative session was a Thursday because the board liked having it on a Thursday, it seemed. We got good feedback from that. We could go back to a Saturday. But I just want to bring it to attention that, you know, there was no discussion there about this. Okay, good. I'm fine with a Thursday. Um, For a delivery session? Yeah. yeah we I feel like we don't get as much um, attendance on, on a weeknight after work. And that we really need to go back to having them on Saturdays. I mean, we can tell I mean, I'm how many people to the public. Well, to yeah, the I, I would say that we, we didn't get great attendance anyway, mm -hmm. and, and, and a lot of people, you know, there was, I think, one person from the budget committee because nobody was comfortable coming into an indoor space. So I think the pandemic definitely played a role yeah. in the Thursday thing. Um, but in a normal year, we don't get good turnout of a delivery session. I, you know, which doesn't mean I'm opposed to a Saturday. By all means, if you want to move back to a Saturday, but, it's you know, I think about it. Well, maybe leave that blank for now. Yeah, I mean, we don't have to pick it now. Um, but, yeah. Okay, so besides that, is everyone okay with these dates? Um, we might want to consider shuffling around some of the slots. I mean, like, on the 6th, police, fire, and stuff. Like, there's, there's some heavy hitters on the same night. But... Uh, uh, it's probably fine. Well, but yeah, I mean the budget committee may, but as far as you all are concerned, that the big concern is: are you going to have your budget proposal ready for them to hear um, September 29th, CIP Highway Transfer Station? That means the board has to have discussed those items, mm -hmm. and people know what they're presenting. Yep. So, so. Aside from that, like I think that's that's you know, yes, it's a lot to present to major departments in an evening, but I think that's more about. I mean, by all means, you can suggest that to the budget committee, but I think it's more about are you going to be ready with those decisions by those dates? So uh, I have a question about the schedule. Um, so it seems like there's only one meeting in November. Um, yes. Why are we not pushing it? Down a bit well, and, and we could. October. So, so I worked this out with Miles based on the budget committee's mm -hmm. feedback. So, what what they had was way more spread out into earlier September. So, I tried to, on the one hand, kind of respect their desire to get started earlier, but at the same time, leave them some extra dates because very often there are conflicts or they need a second night to decide or discuss. So. I think you could certainly take, like, you know, bump everything down a week, but I think you're going to get some negative feedback from the budget committee about a compressed schedule and no flexibility on the other hand. So what I was anticipating for November, because there's only one meeting in November. Yeah, and there was only before, yeah. I think the, it was the holidays that were really... And, and that, yeah, the one meeting is, is yeah, they, they still have two early November, I think, at least one, but maybe even two. It was just, yeah, it was just that one on the 17th. Was no, no, but free, free. Oh, free. Yeah, available. Yeah, we might want to consider. The third, the, I mean. Two meetings in third, uh, two, two meetings in November. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so do you want to have, um, 
I feel like, like that gives us more time. And, absolutely. You know, especially for CIP, um, you know, to start next month. Well, I said almost next oh, month. Oh, CIP starting next week. Maybe so, somewhere like the 11th, uh, 11, 10th, because we'll have a meeting in there. So do you want to maybe, do you want to move the whole meeting of the 29th to November, uh, rather, um, yeah, November 3rd or 10th? And just leave that September 29th open. What what do we want to move into early November? Uh, which one needs the most time? So CRT. I'm just counting. It's kind of hard to know without knowing what the proposals are. Um, but I would say CIP is kind of heavy because a that committee has to meet, deliberate, make a recommendation. Mm -hmm. um, but then. You know, the board typically starts with CIP before it hears from other department heads. It's kind of supposed to frame the conversation. You know, in you know, in light of the really heavy capital expenses we're facing, this is how we're thinking about the operating budget. Or in light of a relatively light capital year, maybe we can have a heavier operating year. So. Um, but, but you don't have to think about it that way. You don't have to approach it that way. How do you know what to take? Um, do, do you have, when you plan for capital, do you meet with all the department heads first? They, yep, we schedule time with them. <clears throat> so we have a you know, the CIP spreadsheet, mm -hmm. which has the, their, I uh, refrain from using the term I was about to use. Mm -hmm. Wish um, list? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say. Mm -hmm. um, the, the items they're requesting, um, they might come with some, some tool with something that wasn't on the CIP, which happens almost every year. Um, but those meetings we couple tightly together to get just get through it. Um, and, and that's my approach, and that worked well with the last committee. This new committee might say, do that. I, I don't have time in August, um, which would really put us. Um, but, but if you have a new police chief who may not have the same needs the way he sees it, um, but also the department heads will weigh in on, um, or we would ask them to weigh in on whether the dates are still appropriate for replacing a certain piece of equipment if we already own it. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it can last another year, or maybe we're having a lot of trouble with it and we ought to move it up a year. Um, and also, are the prices that are on the sheet still valid? Yeah. Um, so that one of the things that I had mentioned um, in our strategic was uh, about our capital um, bids and evaluation. I think we need to tighten that up. So um, that's probably a, it. It'll be an interesting discussion. Yeah, I mean, we don't normally. I think department heads go and get like a general price, but not a bid uh, for for stuff that won't be on the warrant for another because. Right. right. Well, I mean, when we actually go to purchase, I think oh, yes. we need to really evaluate costs. Yep. Agreed. Um, so, Miles, do you, I mean, do you think it makes sense to, does it make sense to move everything down and include the temp, like Paul said? So that would put um, so CFP. So it's, it's about nine weeks until the, the first one of these, which I, I think is, gives us enough time. But I'm also... You know what? We can we can keep it just the way it is, and then if we need to fill the tent in for an extra, yeah, we have it. Does that sound good? I think that sounds good. Gives gives some. Because it gives us a, a buffer. Some. Uh, yes, exactly. I think you can also go back to them and say, you know, we had great intentions, but for you know, right, this that or the other right. reason, it's just not working out. We need another week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so is the expectation that the liaison for each of these departments um, sits with the department head to prepare? Their budget or what is the process? So for that? that's that's sort of our next okay. um, topic. So we're good with the proposed. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Sure. Um, so we in the, the past um, x number of years, we've given guidance to department heads to say like try to keep it flat or keep it flat or we're thinking about last year we authorized um, a one percent raise. Um, so I, I think we need to think about what we want to tell department heads. Um, as far as like meeting with them and helping them develop their budget, I don't 
I don't know if that's, I mean. Well, you all have not had, they, they've not had a liaison to the select board yeah. before. So um, I think it's a great opportunity to do that if they feel as though there's a benefit. But, but also, it might be a good opportunity for each of you to learn more about how they construct their budget. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think there's a benefit, but, but the caution I would express is we would want to make sure that the budget that's represented to the board is really um, what the department had wants it to be, but, but that each of you individually can't direct or control what that presentation looks like to the board. So my thoughts are this. Last year we um, we went forward with a 1% raise. I don't think we're going to be able to do that indefinitely. Um, you know, just because we're going to start losing people um, due to other communities that pay better. Um, so I don't, I don't know what the right number is. You know, we also can't below the, the budget. I think a 1% raise was about $9,000. Approximately. So with that in mind, like one or two or three or or zero, and this is guidance we're giving them. They, they can come forward with any budget they they like. But so, so one of the things that I noticed in the personnel policy that we're not observing is the annual performance review and compensation plans. How do we um, start to think about um, following the guidance of our policy uh, when we're talking about um, compensation? Good question. I don't have an answer. Well, so I, I think, I, I would just like to offer that there's an inherent problem with the select board evaluating your, your direct reports, which doesn't mean that you shouldn't try, but there's the problem is that um, because you work full time, and, and we should have board members that work and have lives and are real people, that's re representative government, but how do, you, how do you know what, you know, whether somebody is late all the time or whether they're creating a toxic work environment for their employees, like what are you measuring? Well, it's, it shouldn't be on the select board necessarily to um, manage two levels down. It should be on the department heads yes. to right. make that yes. decision. So, so and that, that should happen on the one hand, absolutely. People deserve performance reviews. I just mean for the department heads, you know, somebody might feel as though somebody's doing a great job, somebody else thinks that person is falling short in some areas and let's address that and so collectively how do you have how do you come to an agreement about somebody that you're not really observing and interacting with except for you know once every other week um, but then as far as so the discussion we've had in the past around your point that people who have a supervisor who are, is not the select board um, absolutely deserve performance reviews but then Say, for example, everybody gets a great performance review, except you've got department heads who are not getting reviewed. Well, they so, should so be getting reviews from us. The part, we should be um, doing performance reviews on department heads. Yes. Department heads should be doing performance reviews on their employees. I, I, I don't disagree. I'm just saying that there's, like, it's really hard for three people who are, you know, you're, you're evaluating, like, um, come up with measurable goals, and how do you come up with measurable goals mm -hmm. when you see people for such short periods of time, you know, you're not really, um, we have this, this is why some communities have a town manager, because you can't really manage people that you interact with in such a limited way, and, and there's no real way to correct that because of the nature of your positions. So, and then you have to agree based on what the limited interaction is. So, not as though you can't come up with something, but I'm just kind of, Pointing out the um, that it's that it's very limited because it, it can't ever be more than that by the nature of the structure. I disagree, um, and I think uh, I think that we could set some simple goals for our department heads um, as measurable goals. That's yes, my point. Right, measurable right. goals, and our, our department heads could set some simple goals for their employees. And maybe the first goal for our department heads is 
to put together something to evaluate their employees. Yeah. Yes. I know I get a performance review every year. Do you get a performance review every year? Um, not every year, but um, it's the intention. Okay. So oh. this is a <clears throat> great conversation. Um, and it, it definitely leads into, so if we're going to think about, um, so we've done across the board raises for as long as I've been on the board, it's not mm -hmm. been very long. Um, so I, I think what you're saying is switch to a model of like a merit increase? Um, or, well, or I mean, yes, in some ways. I mean, I really think it, it's our only opportunity to evaluate the performance of people, even if it's, you know, one or two percent increase. Um, you know, and, and I think it's important that they get that feedback. Mm -hmm. I think it's God's work, like you said, it's God's work. You know, it's not just like one member of I have like the highway topic, for mm -hmm. instance. So right. my responsibility should get together, I mean I know you did a good job, and get together and at least come up with a somewhat of a job description, you know, like you use other towns or whatever, so I can sit down with Jordan and say, This is what I kind of expect you doing. I and think then, I think we have them. Well But well, you know, maybe even go into a little more detail and you know, and make sure he understands what he's expected to do and then that's what we do as board members, but then that, that's as far as we go, and then, like you said, the bottom heads down, mm -hmm. are taking care of the employees. Well, and, and maybe we create a simple form that, you know, a checklist for them, you know, that to keep it very simple for that at that level. Yes, but but to what Paul just said though about meeting with your department head and and relaying your expectations, it really needs to be board expectations, and the, the, so the board needs to come up with a with a with a job description if there isn't one already. And True. I think it shouldn't just be. Paul decide what the highway should do. Right. It shouldn't just be Kevin deciding right. what right. you right. should do. It shouldn't be Miles yeah. deciding what someone else should do. I agree with that. It should be a boy decision. So I, I think what, what I'm leading into is that this is a um, one thing has to happen before the uh, step by step process. We're not, we've got to develop a budget probably before this can happen. True. Um, so I, I think in general, like, what do we want to tell department heads? Like, try to keep it flat. We're going to think about 2% raises. But just because we got to come up with a number. Well, and, and I might suggest that, like you're saying, salaries are separate from other things. Mm -hmm. So you might even tell them, um, you know, give us a recommendation about what you think for your, your, what you think you need to retain your employees and put whatever you want for salaries that meets that, but just know that the, the select board is going to handle that separately. Aside from salaries, keep it to no more than 1% or 2% outside of salaries or something, because salaries being the largest portion of any budget, if you, if you, if you talk about it in a combined way, then um, you're really not talking about the things that aren't salary, if that makes sense. Because when you say keep it to two percent, um, that you know equipment two percent and self, you know supplies two percent, right. everything two percent, or you know, um, I, I think it would be helpful to keep those conversations separate um, for for department heads and tell them, you know. Um, maybe a percentage outside of salaries and then what you're thinking about separately for salaries. Can we table that until the next meeting? Just so we can kind of ponder that I think of we can. Um, so I guess it depends on, on the, the next, the second part of that is the deadline that we want to tell them like you got to be ready with your budget by. Mm -hmm. Which feeds into the budget committee schedule that you just agreed to. So you got to give yourself mm -hmm. enough time to go through these. Right. Right. Um, so our next meeting is August 9th. Um, that's can, true. Um, can, is that soon enough to make that decision on an approach for how we're going to well, work that? For, for reference, not mm -hmm. that you need to care because you don't, but um, the deadline last year for department heads was the middle of August for submitting them to the board. So new board, maybe you're going to deliberate faster over the budgets. I don't know how Paul and Miles feel about how that went last year, whether you thought that was a good one. Well, okay, I think we should, we, uh, we could have been a little, a little bit quicker on the draw to get the, the budget done. That's yeah. the only thing. I agree. Um, there's 
there's too much time spent talking about a hundred dollar line item. Yeah, we can like, move yeah, yeah, there's some of that was like that the conversation isn't worth a hundred dollars to me. Um, <laughs> but um, so to answer your question, I think we can table it till next time, but then we really need to make a decision and tell them. Like okay. uh, and I do think we should tell them like middle end of August, you've got to have your budget in front of us. If if I'm sure they're thinking about it. They, they, well, I, they, I've they, told them to be they, thinking about it and that the season's coming, and I've given them templates so that they can start thinking about it. So templates are always good. Eight, nine. Okay, let's move on to uh, pick up the discussion on facilities director. Um, I don't know if you two have given more thought to how and if this position could be structured. Um, I think what we left off was we were going to try to get a clear definition of what the position was responsible for and the certifications that we were expecting for this person. Um, have we come up with anything on that? Well, I think we table this the following week and do a little more forethought on it and see how many hours. So, I hate to create jobs. Without knowing what the expectation is. Well, I, I guess I guess um, let let's think about it backwards. Like like so, um, I I think it would be you know we can make a list of what are our tasks and expectations for this job, and then from that get to what might be the qualifications and certifications you're looking for that would qualify you to do these things. <clears throat> Are we better off to have to consider really contractors to come in, annual maintenance contractors to come Possibly. in and evaluate plumbing, Possibly. and evaluate air conditioning, and evaluate lighting um, or electrical needs instead of actually hiring a per person well, without the ability to do all those things? Um, that that in some ways would be simpler and easier, and but the the difference is they um, if there is maintenance to do, are they going to do it? Like, you know, say for example, you're supposed to um, change the filters on the ACs quarterly. So, um, I don't know that you, so, so the problem is that, you know, some years we might have a service contract that has a person come in and they do a basic level of maintenance and service and then nobody forgets to renew the, nobody remembers to renew the contract for the next year because it's not really anybody you know like overhead doors if you is, need to go, is a good example every you don't think about it I totally understand um, I gotta have to I gotta take off at eight thirty. Okay. okay. So I think we probably have to take that as well. Yep. I, yeah. Okay. I think I mean I think that's okay. I think you're okay so the things that we. we Got to get through tonight. Uh, hybrid meetings, which is, is we just need to like come up with a plan. I don't know if we really need to discuss it. We create a Zoom meeting, set up a laptop, get a hearing. Well, device. and well, and who is? Yeah, we need a we need yeah, a, right. um, a speaker microphone, and we need to know like who's paying attention to somebody wants to talk. Um, let me, let me think about that and try to come up with a plan. Okay. Great. Right. And, and I know that the uh, water district does it, and yeah. they recommended yep. that if we want to get a vice room, that's what they do. So I, I'll talk to them. I'll reach okay. out to them. Yeah. Great. Pat, Pat. And I'll try to figure out a, a, a more formal plan on this. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the next item is an abatement, and I believe this concerns me. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, so the, I'm going to recuse myself and... Um, Caroline, if you can cue it up, and I'm not going to speak or vote. <clears throat> okay. So, um, Miles noticed the discrepancy in how his property oh. was assessed. It was on our records as a four-bedroom, um, and it's indeed a three-bedroom. So, assessing has verified that it's really a three-bedroom house. Oh, um, so, um, it's... It, it, it changes the value by, I think, $300. It's not, in, it's not significant in this... So what do we need to vote? So if you would, you know, move in second to um, approve the abatement request. Okay, I'll move forward with the abatement request for three bedroom as opposed to four bedroom. From my own second. From my own second. Second. Okay. And you two vote. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Got it. All right.
Okay, Miles, you can come back. And then the planning board, so Dave wants to be on the planning board? Um, as an alternate, yes, right. we have an alternate opening. Yeah. So we just have to approve it? Yeah, if you would um, nominate, second, and vote. Okay, we'll wait for Miles. I think Dave would be great. I think Dave would be great. So I'll make a motion to appoint Dave Jasko to the planning board. Okay, yeah, we'll second that. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All right. We made you better. So we made you also better. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the MS five thirty five. Um, if there's discussion, it can be tabled. But if it's easy, that would be great. It's just a certification of the audit, which is the paperwork you received okay. about the twenty twenty financials. I was fine with. I was okay with materials that. I read. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so if you would each individually sign it, it's in the board oh, folder. Okay. It, has, it says MS 535. Good. Okay. I'll let you sign it first. Okay. I'm sure you. I'm going to split. Um, ARPA funds, that deadline is fast um, approaching. Yes. August 18th. And um, so the water minister wants to have a meeting with the select board? Right, so two separate issues. Um, the first is, do you want to accept the funds with the strings mm -hmm. attached? If so, we need to get the form. You need to decide that yep. by August 18th. And then separately, if you're going to accept the funds, the water sewer district would like to meet with you mm -hmm. about how they might access some of those funds. Okay. So can, can we plan to make a commitment to that at our ninth meeting? Is that I think at the 18th is the deadline? Is that right? right. So you do have what, that okay. meeting. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's really just agreeing that we're going to accept the funds. Is there um, and, the, and the strings? The strings. It's about the strings. Okay. Um, yeah. Nine. Texting while driving. Okay. You know. The, no, it's true. Though. It's some. some is, is that residents or employees or employees? Both? All right. Okay. Thanks, man. All right. Uh, Sorry to worry about that. No worries. Okay. Um, um, so all employee impact. Well, all people who drive, like drive yes. on the job. Yes. Okay. Alright. One moment, please. Thank you. Can I call to the um, ninth? Uh, policy, um, I think we can probably table that um, since we're losing a member. Um, board member updates. I. Um, I met with the budget committee uh, on last Wednesday, last Wednesday, uh, to review the second quarter uh, financials. That was um, went very smoothly. Um, no, no. I mean, there were clear questions, but um, nothing, nothing too crazy there. Um, on next Thursday, I think it's the fifth. We have our first CIP meeting, which is going to be pretty much an organizational meeting and talk about what that committee is going to do. Okay. Um, but that's it for me. And that's the fifth you said? The fifth, yep. Okay. Um, and so I met with the Highway Safety Committee, as everyone knows, um, about the Main Street parking. That was actually the primary topic. Um, we got a lot of good input from the residents as well as um, the chief and the highway agent. and. Um, the consensus was that we bring it back to public hearing, um, get input, and um, we'll see where we go from there. Are they going to be having another meeting soon? Um, there were a couple of other topics that I don't mm -hmm. think they addressed that night. I, the chair was not there, so I have no idea. Yeah, what right. I forgot about that. Um, yep. we, so we need to also, um, another issue with communicating meetings, we really have to, you know, Tell me what the expected date is, and I'll make sure um, that the meeting information um, is distributed if we have to. Or I'm not really sure how so that's coordinated. Are you talking about why the chair wasn't there? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the why the chair wasn't there was because he was resi he resigned, and I removed him from the email list, okay. and then he was appointed, and I forgot to put him back on in time. Okay. So, so that's why that happens. But typically, it wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. You, uh, you know, the email list. You know, the group email list works well when it's updated, it's typically updated. So um, 
the group would typically um, either decide when its next meeting is at a meeting because you know you have more topics, in which case you or the chair could let me know and I'll post it. Or if, say we have a resident complaint, I will give it to you and John, or I, I will give it to you all and, and, and we can come up with a meeting date and post it. So, okay. um, in other, you know, so it shouldn't happen again. Okay. Um, who administers the, um, the town Facebook site? Um, it is part, um, the volunteer who does the website. So, so it's closed to comments, but typically, I'm not sure always, I don't, you know, there's no policy, but if there's a post, I think it always goes on the Facebook, or maybe okay. only sometimes, I, I can't, I don't know. But so it's, it's run by the same person. Who is that? Tia Pass. Okay, so she manages um, the Facebook site as well. The, the one that just says Rollinsford. Yes, town of Rollinsford. No, I think it's just Roll. Well, you might ask her because okay. they're, you know, it's been recreated a few times under different names. Okay, because I, I do want to propose that, and it's a very simple thing to do, and I'm willing to sign up to do it, is that we put a link to the agenda on that site and make it available for people. Uh, and I'm willing to do that because it's like a five minute job. So I can coordinate with Tia if you know, it makes sense. Yes? And yeah, maybe if it's just a static link and it just always brings you to the most current. Well, you have to share the document. You can share it um, for viewing only, uh, too. But it's a link. It takes five minutes to yeah. do. So. Okay. so just as long as people know that it's subject to change. Yes. Yeah, that's the yeah. key. Um, and I think that's something we could check off our list in terms of communication and um, because we've had people ask about the journeys. So. Yeah. Um, and it is now on the website anyway, so if people go to the select board page, great. there's a link right there too. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay, good. I'll check that out too. So what's Tia's contact information? Um, Tia.pass at rollinsford.nh.us. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, town administrator updates? Um, Tomorrow night we're having our kickoff meeting of the subcommittee that's um, working on the um, fresh water grant around, for, um, which will help align our, our planning documents with the stormwater um, documents and protect freshwater drinking sources. Uh, so, so that's happening tomorrow night. La um, last week the ZBA <coughs> met to, to hear a variance request for helicopter use in the urban residential zone which did not pass, but um, it brought up some procedural questions um, which um, may precipitate a request for training. So at this point, they're looking for free online training. Um, the ZBA themselves? The ZBA. Okay. Um, I don't know that there's recorded training. So my, I, I believe they're going to face either a manual to read, which they already have access to, which um, is, is kind of vague, not explicit in the manner that they're looking for for this question. Or they could go to the municipal association and with select board approval pay five or six hundred dollars for on-demand training. Or they could request the select board have attorney Radigan come by and talk to them. So um, right now they're trying to see if there are three options and they can get their answers question, uh, questions answered, but, but you may be getting a request from that, which which would be prudent because um, it's it's um, an important body that makes decisions mm -hmm. that are likely to put in the, to the town in a position of, of getting sued if somebody wants to appeal that decision. So, um, and that is the nature of this this question is around how to vote to make sure that the decision is recorded properly, um, and I'm sure they have other questions as well. But that that's what that's about. Um, the 162 Summersworth Road is going back to the planning board. That's the junkyard and cast towing. They got conditional approval. Um, one of those conditions was for paving the front parking lot area. Um, they agreed to those conditions. Now that they have a price tag, they want to come $50,000. They want to come back to the board and ask for gravel instead. Um, to my mind, the planning board already addressed that, that gravel was not the same um, and, and it should be paving, but um, 
I don't know how the planning board might take that request, but they, they want the planning board to consider gravel instead. So that's um, Tuesday next week. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Um, any other business to come before the board? Um, I just, if I could just, I'm sorry, mention, yep. um, okay. I, I didn't touch on the transfer station survey idea, and that was, um, I last week I had engineers here to talk about oh. the variety of reasons. Different kind of survey than I had in my mind. Yeah, yeah, sorry, no, not, not how do you like our transfer station, <laughs> but um, I, I just want to remind you that that um, quote is out there for a variety of levels of service to determine what our footprint is. Um, we separately need to figure out where the closed landfill is because we need to maintain it um, and whether or not we can expand the footprint, but also we are going to have to face how we are going to become compliant with this federal grant for recreational land that we are going to be audited on anytime now. So th those are the primary purposes of surveying the property. Um, we don't have a quote yet, but okay. I just want to see if there's any questions about that. Can you share uh, the documents on the federal requirements? The we don't really have them, frankly. Okay. Um, I, I have a letter from, I will, I will send you a letter from two years ago from the State Department of Parks and Recreation to mm -hmm. say you're on our radar and we're going to audit you soon. But it doesn't say very much more than that. Okay. Well, could you share that? Yes, I okay. certainly will. All right. Okay. I think I need to understand all of the. We, have, we all have a lot of understanding it's, it's, to do. Okay. Yes. It's complicated. Okay. Yeah. Um, community input. I have something. Okay. I don't want to see any trees cut on Main Street. I'd like to have more planted. And I know, like Robin <clears throat> Aiken said, if we can find places for trees, mm -hmm. she will get the trees. Mm -hmm. Okay. I tend to agree with you. Um, any, anyone else for community input? All right, hearing none, um, so we can adjourn by consensus. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Um, I'll second it. Let's Vote everyone in favor of aye. And we'll see you on the ninth. Thank you.